Hi, I'm Ben Cunningham from Action Rehab and I'm here today to talk about mallet finger, something that we see heaps of and I think is very misunderstood in our community. It happens so often and it looks so simple, but it can actually be so complex. So I'm going to talk about the differences between the types of mallets and how we treat these sort of injuries. Mallet finger injuries are very complicated. There are the tenderness mallets, which can be just treated with an aluminium zimmer or an off-the-shelf stack splint. But ironically, those are the most complicated ones. So today I'd just like to talk about the different sorts of mallets and how we can try and treat them differently to hopefully improve our results. So first we're going to talk about the tenderness mallets. These are the ones which can be non-painful. These ones patients report maybe get caught underneath a bed sheet or some people don't even know how they got them but they just have a droop at the end of their finger. So what's happening here and why aren't they painful? Well often the oblique retinacular ligament and the insertion of the extensor tendon into the tip of the finger has been pulled off. And when this happens it can create a chain reaction moving down through the tip joint and into the middle joint as well. And we'll see that sometimes as a swan neck deformity. Then there are the bony mallets. These ones are often painful. A patient will report getting hit on the end of the finger by a football or some sort of traumatic injury. And there'll be a little bit of bone probably chipped off, which is also attached to the terminal extensor tendon and the oblique retinacular ligament. Ironically, these ones heal really, really well. The bony mallets can be treated in just a normal mallet finger splint holding the fingertip in, a, in slight extension to try and make sure that that bony fragment heals. And bone heals really quickly to bone. If there's more than 50% of the joint surface though, the one thing we do need to be careful of is we don't want to overextend the tip because that can dislocate the joint. So for bony mallets, yep, they can get away with just a standard mallet finger splint. The tenderness mallet finger injuries, on the other hand, these are much more complex. We need to be careful of these, especially if there's a tendency for the patient otherwise to swan neck or hyperextend at their PIP joint. So for these ones, we need to think differently about our splinting. And ironically, these are the ones that GPs and emergency departments tend to put into those stacked splints and not do too much about. Recently, I saw a patient who was six weeks down the track having been treated in a stack splint. She came in, she was swan necking and had a 60 degree lag at her DIP joint. So what do we do with these patients and how do we try and prevent these things from happening? Well, we need to think about the oblique retinacular ligament. We need to try and splint both the DIP joint and the PIP joint in what we call an anti-swan neck position, which is almost like putting the finger into a boutonniere position. This position then makes sure that the oblique retinacular ligament is not on stretch. It technically shortens this ligament, which allows the terminal extensor tendon to move further up towards the tip of the finger. This will allow the tendon to heal. So, how do we make sure that we treat mallet finger injuries well? Well, the bony mallets that we look at the size of the fragment don't overextend the patient in the splint. Hyperextension for bony mallets is not helpful. We just want to make sure that that bony fragment heals. And in fact, you might need to get it moving a little bit sooner. Tenderness mallets, on the other hand, really think about the swan neck deformity and the tendency for the oblique retinacular ligament to slacken or pull itself away from the terminal end. And treat those sort of patients in an anti-swan neck, at least for the first couple of weeks. Hopefully, that's going to help you with your treatment of mallet finger injuries and you're not going to get those swan neck complications like we had with our patient. She had a really great result after six weeks of anti-swan neck splinting. She had full extension, in fact a little bit of hyperextension at her DIP joint and she had no swan neck deformity. The patient was really happy and so were we. So next time, really think about your mallet finger treatment.